Well, hi, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to do more partial quotients division. We are in our math journals on pages 206 and 207. Let's go ahead and dive right in. If you take a look at uh, the instructions on the top of page 206, it says, estimate, write a number model to represent the problem, then use partial quotients to solve. Now, if you are in my personal math class, we've been spending a lot of time learning about long division. But uh, partial quotients is another strategy that you can use to help you kind of uh, figure out how to divine the answer by chunking it into smaller parts. So let's read the first problem. It says, there are 184 plants to put into pots. Each pot can hold eight plants. How many pots are needed? Now, before we come up with an estimate, let's write our number model. And our number model is going to be 184 divided by 8 equals something. Let's say P for plants. So now we need to come up with a rounded amount that will get us close to that answer. Well, 184, if rounded to the nearest 100 would round up to 200, and 8 rounded to the nearest 10 would round up to 10. So if I have a problem where I'm dividing 200 by 10, or basically 20 by, with 1 extra 0 divided by 1 with 1 extra 0, my answer is going to be 20. So I need about 20 pots to get this job done. So now I'm going to do the actual computation to figure out how close my estimate really is. Now I wrote my number model as a number sentence, but when I actually go to solve it, I'm going to write my problem in an algorithm. I'm going to put that dividend in its house and put the divisor outside knocking on the door. Okay. Now if we use the partial quotients strategy, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be first asking ourselves how many groups of... 8 can I get out of 1? Well, the answer is none because 1 is too small. So right away, I'm going to uh, think about groups of 10. Okay, And 100 is basically 10 groups of 10. So I can look at this problem, 184, and tell myself, well, 184 is just basically 18 groups of 10 and 4 ones. So what I want to do is ask myself, how many groups of 8 can I get out of 18? Well, I know that I can get two groups of 8 out of 16, because 8 times 2 is 16. So I know that I can get at least two groups of 8 out of 18. So I'm going to write 2 right here, because 2 times 8 is 16. Now... So far, this is pretty similar to long division. However, when we are doing partial quotients, we take it a step further. Instead of thinking about 18 tens in isolation, just looking at the digits, I think about that extra digit behind the 18, the 4, and I round down to the nearest 10, 180. So instead of saying 8 times 2 is 16, I'm going to say 8 times 2 tens, otherwise known as 20, gives me 16 tens, otherwise known as 160. So when I think about how many 8s can I get out of 184, I'm thinking about those extended division facts that we practiced at the beginning of Unit 6. So 8 times 20 gives me 160. And now I subtract. 184 minus 160. Well, I am left with a difference of 24, and so I repeat the process again. What times 8 gives me 24? Or how many groups of 8 can I get out of 24? Well, if you know your math facts, you know that 3 times 8 is 24. When I subtract the difference, I'm left with 0. And then once I add my partial quotients together, 20 plus 3, I get a total of 23. So my answer here is 23 pots. 
Now the last part of this problem is asking us how many plants are left over once you divide all the uh, plants into pots. Well, as you can see down at the bottom of my uh, algorithm, there are zero plants left. So I have basically a remainder of zero. So I have no plants left over. Everything worked out well. Now that's not always the case when we divide. Now just as a quick sidebar before we go forward in this worksheet, let's compare this problem with the long division approach to dividing 184 by 8 because you probably see some very similar attributes to these two strategies. So let's set up my algorithm again, 184 divided by 8. So my first question is, how many groups of 8 can I get out of 1? And we already determined the answer is 0 because one's too small. So 0 times 8 gives me 0, and then I subtract the difference, I get 1, and I bring down my 8, which is going to leave me with 18. 18 is bigger than my divisor, I'm checking that, so I have to repeat the process. So now I divide 8 into 18. 18 divided by 8 is going to give me 2 groups of 8, because 2 times 8 is 16. I'm going to subtract the difference, 18 minus 16 is 2. Then I'm going to bring down my last digit, that's 4. I see that now I'm left with 24, and when I divide 8 into 24, or divide 24 into groups of 8, I can get 3 groups, because 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract the difference, I see that I have nothing left, so now I'm done, and I get my same quotient, my same answer of 23. Now, when you compare these two strategies, you see similarities. I'm uh, multiplying. I'm thinking about facts that are close to the number I'm actually dividing. I'm subtracting differences, and then I'm coming up with a quotient. Okay, But as you can see in the partial quotients uh, method, I try to get as close to the amount in the first run. How many 8s can I get out of 180? Well, I can get 20 because 20 times 8 is 160. Here I'm taking it one digit at a time in long division. Okay? Both strategies are just as effective. But since we're practicing partial quotients division, let's stick with that for right now, shall we? All right, problem number two. It says, carpenters are installing hinges. They have 371 screws, and each hinge needs three screws. How many hinges can they install? So first, I'm going to write my number model. So 371 divided into groups of three will give me, let's say, H for hinges. So now I need an estimate. Well, I could round 371 up to the nearest 100, and that would get me to 400. And 3 rounded into the nearest 10 would round down to nothing, which doesn't help me. I could round 3 to 5, but uh, there's a simpler way I can get an estimate, because 371 is awful close to 360. Now I know that when we round down, I would round down to the nearest 10, I would go to 370. Not skip a whole group of 10 and go to 360. But when I divide 360 by 3, okay, I'm going to get a, uh, an answer that I can come up with easily because I know what times 3 gives me 36, and that is 12. So when I have 36 tens, that gives me a quotient of 120, or 12 tens. Okay? So 360 divided by 3 is going to give me 120. So my answer is going to be about the size of 120. But since I have more than 360, my answer is going to be a little bit higher. Okay, so even though that wasn't a, uh, a textbook example of estimation, it gets us close to where we need to be. And that's the whole point of coming up with an estimate. Okay? So let's go ahead and solve for 371 divided by 3. Now, we already know that I can get 120 groups out of 371 because 3 times... 12 is 36, so 3 times 120 would get me to 360. Now you see, that's the reason why 
we want to come up with these estimates. That gets us closer to the actual computation. 371 minus 360, that's going to leave us a difference of 11. Okay? Now I have to ask myself, how many groups of 3 can I get out of 11? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. So that means the best I can do is 3 groups, because 3 times 4 would give me too much, or I would be subtracting more than what I have. So 3 times 3, of course, is 9. I'm going to subtract the difference. I am left with 2. And when I check my difference here, I see that the number I'm left with is smaller than my divisor. So that means I have no more groups of 3 I can pull out of this amount. So I'm done. So what's my total? Well, I'm going to add 120 to 3, which of course gives me 123 sets of hinges. Okay. So now, this question down here below, how many screws are left over, takes on a little bit more significance because I have a remainder. That's two. So I have two screws left over. Those uh, carpenters are probably just going to pocket those screws and put them in a little uh, sorter until it's time for the next job and then go and buy more screws. Okay? Waste not, want not. Now the last thing I'm going to leave you with is problem number three. And it says, draw a rectangle divided into parts to represent your answer to problem number two. Now when you hear the word rectangle and we're dealing with division, you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, does that have anything to do with partitioning rectangles like we did in multiplication? Well, the answer would be yes. Okay, I can draw a rectangle that's going to help me visualize the idea that I am trying to divide 371 into groups of three. So just like I would in a partitioning rectangle, I would set up my problem knowing that I have three place values, hundreds, tens, and ones, and then I would think to myself, how many groups of three can I get out of 300? Well, I know I can get 100 groups because 100 times three equals 300. So if I create a little subtraction problem off to the side, and if I start with 371 and I subtract the 300 that I came up with, I'm left with 71. Okay, so right now I've got 100 groups of three. Now I look at the 71 and I ask myself, so how many groups of three can I get a 71? Thinking about tens. Well, I know that three times two is six, and three times three is nine, so the best that I can do for these tens is uh, 3 times 20, because 20 times 3 gives me 60. So I'll write the 20 there. And then I'm going to subtract 60 from 71. That leaves me with a difference of 11. Once I have my 1s, I can now come up with one more uh, fact family problem. 3 times 3 gives me 9. 3 times 4 gives me 12. 12 is bigger than... 11, so the best I could do is 3 groups of 3, which gives me 9. 9 taken away from 11 leaves me a difference of 2. So as you can see, I've got my 123 groups out of my 371, and I'm left with 2 as my remainder. Partial quotients using a rectangle, long division, these are all strategies for you to divide numbers. Any one of these problems uh, can be solved with any one of those strategies. You just have to figure out which strategy makes the most sense to you or you find the easiest to, uh, to uh, work around, and uh, that's the one you should choose. Now, it says use the partial quotients approach on this page, but down the road, when it comes to dividing a problem, you're going to be asked to just divide. So if long division feels more comfortable, use long division. If uh, creating a model with a rectangle helps you figure it out, use that rectangle model. Or if partial quotients uh, make sense to you, uh, then use partial quotients. As math teachers, we want to equip you with as many tools in your toolbox as we can to help you approach these types of problems. Okay? Questions? If so, you need to talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to help you and uh, show you each and every one of these strategies that I just modeled for you today. 
Uh, I hope that uh, this video was informative to you. Try problems four, five, and six on your own. And uh, until we speak again, have a good day.